Hello, my name is Robert Eaton, and I have this video I want to make for the designers of the of the reusable rocket from SpaceX. I'm such a big hero of SpaceX, and I'm a hero of Elon Musk, and I own the center of the net.com. But I try to put this together in a Reddit post, and I don't have a lot of time to talk about to to draw my descriptions and I know that my my text is not clear so I'm going to tell you with this video and I hope you understand all right Quataqua is my son filming this my boy Bobby and it's gonna be the video back up a little bit Quataqua can you see this hi all right so let me see here let's imagine this is the rocket mm -hmm. okay now SpaceX we know is launching the rocket we're gonna use this pen. launching the rocket up and everybody knows that you get to the top, keep an eye on the pencil, I'll talk right here. Yeah. You get to the top of the launch, and then it releases the payload into space, and the rocket crashes to the earth. And of course, we know that the rocket costs millions and millions of dollars, billions of dollars, I don't know how many, it costs a lot of money, and the gas, for the rocket is, is almost nothing compared to the cost of the rocket. Smashes. The rocket smashes. It's not recoverable. And we know that the space shuttle program, you know, they had tried to have a recoverable rocket. Uh, but of course, the main booster rocket from the space shuttle, you know, it was not recoverable. And that was, a, and it required hundreds of thousands of man hours, or, you know, hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of man hours to actually prepare the new space shuttle. I have an idea and I and I and I I know it's not rocket science or it is rocket science. Surely everybody must I mean sh the engineers must be thinking of this. Let's say, you know, you know my I'm a big fan of, of the space shuttle of of the uh Orion project and the heavy rockets. We're we're a big fan of my family. Um of space capsules and space travel in general. So, so fo fo follow me as we explore this idea here. As we explore this idea. This is your rocket. And when I've seen, when I see it launch into space, or when I've seen them launch, even testing the SpaceX reusable rocket platform, doesn't that just seem a little bit awkward trying to land such a huge multi-story rocket? Mm -hmm. What if we launch the rocket like this? What if we what if we launch the rocket and it spins as we launch? Well, that's not a hard thing. From what I understand, the plo the recent New Horizons probe to Pluto was launched spinning anyways, right? Um, but what if we launch spinning and as the rocket releases its payload, let's say that inside of the rocket, the largest tank, like this pencil inside of the rocket and the, the rocket engine, at the bottom here, it's spinning. Let's say that the external tanks, well, I know, I know there's oxygen and helium tanks inside the rocket. Let's say that the that the tanks are actually in sections. The biggest tank is this very simple central cylinder, and then and then inside the body of the rocket, inside the body the body panels, there are the other tanks. And after the payload is released, the payload goes up into space. Here we see the rocket spinning. That force of the spinning centri centri centrifugal force, it releases locking joints down here. And the locking joints, let's say that the walls of the tank, the walls of the rocket, let's say, I I'm just saying five, but it might be six, or you do your own design. They're released and they extend like this. And all of a sudden, you have a cylinder-based 
design. Maybe even like a diamond is the extent. Maybe similar to Stephen Rock. Maybe a diamond would be more accurate. And 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 it's it's almost fail safe because we have the cylindrical force from it spinning on the launch. So as the as the sides are extended, you know, and how are they extended? Well, at the top there'd be a simple heavy duty hinge. I mean, what is more simple than a hinge? We've seen the last rocket fell from pivots, but a hinge is surely maybe five hinges, huge hinges. These are almost non-fallible in, in our current state of technology, right? And there's almost no computer IQ to hinge design. And so we don't have to use any combustible bolts to launch the hinges open. We use the cylindrical force, the, the, the centrifugal force of its spinning to release the opening. And if their center tank is surrounded and the tank is already there and, and, and for rigidity and, and for structural, you know, fail safe performance, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a strong central tank. Well, let's say that there's a collar around that tank. And let's say that this collar is, you know, I, don't know, I, I think that magnetically is the best type of bearing, like maglev trains. You know, there's no failure in that. And it's pretty easy to lock it. A magnet, I think, would be the most secure. I don't know if it has something to do with uh, possibly igniting the the rocket fuel, I don't know if there's a danger, but I, I guess there's probably isn't. But if there was a magnet here and that magnet was that magnet lock was simply released on the cover, allowing the magnet to extend to the midpoint of the cylinder structure. And then on that magnet there was locking coils. You choose your high tension steel coils. We've been doing that for hundreds of years with with bridges and they don't weigh that much. I mean, we pack parachutes all the time with, with, uh, parachute, with, with, I mean, with cables, we depend on cables. It's a, it's a pretty simple technology, but these high heights, high dense, high strength, high tensile cables attached to the hinges, I'm sorry, attached to the walls, which flange out, which are attached to the hinges. If these are released and the collar slides up and the sides extend on the hinge, then this bottom area of the hinge, which would be extended, this could be of a parachute type material, Kevlar or your other, your other preferable source of material, which would be on the bottom of the diamond shape, because it's not really going to be a diamond maybe, if you let it extend far enough. And this material, during launch is is packed in there tight, but is is a foldable material that's not a lot of mass, and I'm sure that the weight and the mass of that is less than the propellant that would be used to land the current Space X rocket. So if that material, if that material opened up, you know, is is locked. And let's say, let's say that even within that material, you have some extended bars. You have bars that fold out and they lock. The joints lock as they extend to support the mesh material. Those bars would not have to be very heavy in weight. They would just have to be rigid when they lock. They would be bearing a much lighter vessel as it lands. And then even if you want to have the extended landing bars to support the vessel when it lands, they would be much more simply extended from that drop-down locking position, locked bars. And I would guess that the, that the, the failure rate and all the external variables from maybe atmospheric conditions could be more negotiated by the natural arrow breaking shape of a diamond as it spins and the natural uh, centrifugal force as it spins to open up the opening the flanges and landing the vessel would require 
90% less than the technology required than to try to steer and negotiate and land a cylindrical structure. Because I'm sure as you're landing, there's much more stress on the center structure if it all is one piece. I, I think it is, I think as it lands sideways and it changes its direction as it lands, that's much more stress on the overall body than if the stress was absorbed by the arrow breaking of the extended mesh. I think the interior, the interior frame, I think the interior frame of the structure, I think it could be used more times in a diamond landing formation than it could be on a cylindrical landing formation with less parts, less computational requirements, less engineers, less support personnel. I think the budget would be much, much lower. Can't you understand what I'm saying? Do I really need to draw it out for you? Why? Well, I hope that somebody could hear me because um, I'm a big fan. Thanks a lot. Bye.